So my question, Hans, is all this debate, the Democrats are setting this up. If we only had another three and a half billion dollars for the postal office, we could fix this. Or $25 billion overall. And I'm saying you give them $100 billion. That's not going to fix a damn thing. What do you think? Uh, uh, well, no, you're right about that. Look, as you pointed out, the Postal Service has been losing money for years. And their biggest problem is that they're poorly managed, poorly organized, and any and all reforms that have been proposed to try to turn them into a modern functioning organization that uh, is efficient the way, for example, uh, private companies like Federal Express are, have been opposed by the, I think it's seven unions that represent the employees of the Postal Service. Uh, you know, typical Washington speak is throw money at the problem. That is not going to solve the organizational and management problems at the Postal Service that cause these problems. And look, the mail delays in absentee ballots, the misdelivery of ballots, the failing to put postmarks on the envelopes uh, of absentee ballots, this is a problem that's been going on for years. And suddenly throwing money at it two months before the election isn't going to resolve a problem that they have had for the, the long period that they have. Nor is it going to fix the, the state election law problems. I see Pennsylvania has asked, hey, can we count our ballots three days after the election? You're going to have uh, this sort of thing going on in one state court after another, in battleground right. state after battleground state, which is exactly why Biden has hired 600 lawyers or has 600 lawyer volunteers to litigate this. They are prepared to litigate this, which is right. exactly why, tell me if you agree or not, seriously, and that is why Pelosi, the Democrats, and the media are trying to position this as a Trump failure. That is, he's in charge of the post office, but he's not in charge of the states and the electoral processes. Under the Constitution, right. that's the states. Well, he's in charge of the post office. Well, didn't all the unions just endorse Biden for president of the United States? Well, he's in charge of the post right. office. You know, they're moving mailboxes and all the rest of it. So again, if the Democrats come up short on Election Day, they're going to go in court. They're going to blame Trump. They're going to blame the post office. They're never going to blame their governors. And if they think they've won, they're going to accuse Trump of refusing to leave office. Is that the game plan here? Yeah, I think they are uh, setting everything up to game the system. And again, uh, you can look at the New York primary to see, to see how they're going to do that. Because remember, they are the ones who pushed for tr trying to have as many ballots cast by mail as possible. They then get a high rejection rate, which is normal with absentee ballots. The rejection rate, unfortunately, with them is about twice that of votes cast in a precinct. So now they are in court. There's litigation going on in New York in which they are telling uh, and asking judges, and in fact, they've gotten an order from a judge, ordering election officials to count the rejected ballots. So in other words, they're in court uh, trying to uh, convince a judge, which they've done, to count absentee ballots which were rejected, uh, and the rejections are everything from signatures not matching, which indicates it, it might not have actually been submitted by that particular voter, it might be a fraudulent uh, voter, to it not matching the requirements or meeting the requirements of, of state law, which means it, it probably actually is an Ill, uh, ineligible voter or an Ill, uh, ineligible ballot. And yet now they're going to count them uh, and basically override state laws on that. I think you're going to see that kind of gamesmanship going on all over the country and claims that, well, if you're not counting these ballots that were rejected, uh, you're engaging in discriminatory conduct and trying to keep people from voting, even though that's, that's obviously not the case. This will make uh, the litigation in Bush versus Gore look ridiculously simple, where we really had a few counties in one state. Right. The Democrats have decided to push this into all these states and all these counties. They'd like to do it nationwide. And then you're exactly right. If you don't go along, they say you're suppressing the vote. You don't want right. every vote to count. Uh, and you're right. They game the system. My concern here is this. When I went back and I looked at the Supreme Court recently on a number of these election law cases, uh, whether it's Citizens United or whatever it is elect, uh, related to election law, we have five to four votes going on on that court. Five to yes. four votes. And my concern is the Chief Justice may well flip with, yeah, the, uh, with the Democrat activists on the court. And then after that, Congress can step in. 
And this could be completely unprecedented in any constitutional crisis. Uh, again, I don't want to get into the weeds with this. Maybe one day I will. But they're going to be duking it out as they meet together, counting electoral college votes. And you can only imagine what that's going to look like when you have congressmen and senators all gathered together fighting over what just took place in the states. Wouldn't this be a disastrous constitutional mess? It would. Uh, again, it took six, New York six weeks to count the ballot. We've only got two and a half months to do that between the November election and um, uh, Inauguration Day. Uh, we could have uh, huge delays all over the country, particularly if there's litigation going on contesting the results. And, you know, there have been, Mark, if you, I couldn't believe it, there have been upwards of 150 lawsuits filed this year, an unprecedented number, uh, almost all by liberals, trying to change the rules governing elections uh, including things, by, by the way, of trying to get rid of the security protocols governing absentee or mail-in ballots, saying you shouldn't uh, have to um, uh, have a witness uh, signature on your ballot and other things like that. So if we can imagine litigation going on all over the country after November, big, long delays in counting the ballots, it's possible that for the first time in our history, we, we could get to January 20th and not know the outcome of the election because of the litigation going on all over the country. And I'm not sure a lot of people know this, Mark, but there's actually a federal statute that says that if the outcome of the election has not been determined by January 20th, which is the end of the president's term, the acting president will become the speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think we would challenge that on constitutional grounds, regardless of the statute. But I don't think there's any question that the party that hopes to benefit from this chaos, the yeah. Cloward and Piven party, is the Democrat party. You can see what they've done to our cities. You can see what they've done to our political dialogue. You can see how they operate through the media and Hollywood and our universities. So what the hell, destroy another institution. The president of the United States is the Thomas Paine on this issue. He's, he's telling the American people what's going to happen certainly what might happen, and the Democrats have no problem with it, and they're going to try and blame him.